themselves from the idea that they're doing this because they were infected or influenced. Going to your second question, yes, I think that a lot of young LGBT people uh, in many parts of the world find that it's trendy to be LGBT um, because they have access to a lot of avenues that encourage and empower them as LGBT people. The older generation didn't have those things. What am I referring to? I'm referring to LGBT support groups online, LGBT information that you can find online, uh, witnessing the legalizing of legalization of same-sex marriages in the United States, witnessing European and Latin American countries legalizing marriages, you know, um, with no problems, with no repercussions, and then uh, having access to expressions of being LGBT that they didn't have, that the older generation did not have. But I am very, I would like to ask the young LGBT people, when I say young, I'm talking about 20 and below, or maybe 21, 22 and below, to be careful because Number one, do not forget, um, why, why, no, let me rephrase that. Why am I asking them to be careful? I'm asking them to be careful because it is very easy to forget the struggles that the older LGBT people went through. You know? It's like how my grandmother, God rest her soul, told me, finish your rice. Why? You know, during the time of the Japanese occupation, occupation we didn't have enough food. It was very easy for me to forget that. That, you know, because I had easy access to food, I forget how precious food is and how easy it is for me to waste that. So you think uh, young people nowadays, they're taking it for granted, their freedom? They're taking a lot of things for granted, including being LGBT for granted. Um, so I think it's very important to not forget the past. And second, I think it's very easy for LGBT people who are trendy to persecute LGBT people who are not trendy. You know, um, you have your, let's take for example, the, the, the out gay man. Yeah. The out gay man who is well built because he goes to the gym twice a day, every day of the week. You know, he's smart, he's articulate, he's well educated, um, he's confident, you know. It is very easy for him and to look down on men who are not like that, you know, and to say, uh, um, I, I mean, I know a lot of gay men who uh, make fun, uh, a lot of straight, butch, muscular gay men in Malaysia who make fun of out of shape, effeminate gay men. I see. So people who are, so you know, supposedly persecuted have actually become persecutors themselves. So for these two reasons, I'm asking the younger LGBT people to, to be aware of themselves. You know, I mean, if you're empowered, go all out, be empowered, good for you, but don't forget, not everybody's like you. All right, uh, so do you think, has LGBT people always existed since the old times? That's a very good question, and it's a question that's always been asked um, time and again. The, the, I, the idea of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual, pansexual, and queer is modern. It's modern, right? We're talking about maybe the 20th century. So in that sense, LGBT people never existed. If you look at the way LGBT people are existing today, they never existed. But same-sex attraction and gender diversity has always existed. Always. Do you want some examples? Oh, yes, please. Uh, if you look at um, the Americas, okay, the Americas, let's look at North America, what is now known as the United States. You have First Nation people, uh, previously known as Red Indians, sometimes known as Native Americans, right? First Nation people, there were always two-spirited people. There were 
born male, but they lived as women and they took husbands. And they were respected as shamans, as community leaders. Because for the, the First Nation people, human beings who inhabit both male and female forms of existence are closer to the spirits. Right? And interestingly enough, in Malaysia, you have the very similar people, and these people of course are no, no longer exist because of, uh, because of because a lot of people now have embraced Islam and Christianity. The Manang Bali, the Iban, you probably get this on film as well, the Iban shamans, who also were born male, lived as women, and took husbands, but they were highly respected. And, uh, and, uh, and you also have the Hijras, who are Hindu transgender people, who I think they're still around in uh, Slango. Um, and once in a while, they are invited when a child is born to confer blessings on the child, or they bless marriages. You know? And then in Buddhism, uh, the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin is male and female. So the idea of gender variance, the idea of same-sex relationships has always existed. It's only with the coming of Islam and Christianity, and now especially in Malaysia, you have this unfortunate, um, what's the word I want to use now, you have this unfortunate um, um, uh, it's become uh, religion has become very okay radicalization that's the word I want this unfortunate radicalization of Islam and in certain parts as well as a reaction to same-sex marriages around the world the radicalization of Christianity in Malaysia um, unfortunately diversity in gender and sexuality is no longer tolerated, it's no longer celebrated. Mm, I see. So um, now we're going to talk about gender identity. Do you think is it, is it possible for a person to change their sexual orientation and gender identity? That is a difficult question because that question already has a presupposition, has already a fixed idea behind it, and that fixed idea is that gender identity and sexual orientation is fixed, which is false. Um, there are many ways of understanding gender and sexuality, and a lot of people have come to realize, and when I say people, I'm talking not just about academics and scholars, but also people who are living lives, you know, everyday lives, have come to realize that gender identity and sexual desire, sexual attraction, is never fixed. All of us, you know, have varying degrees of attraction to men and women. All of us. You know. It's just that one particular attraction is greater than the other. So for a man or a woman who says, I'm straight, what he or she is actually saying is, I am more straight, I am more heterosexual than homosexual. I mean, look at our lives. How many of us, you know, when we interact with people, have at one point or another felt this attraction, you know, to a person of the same sex and felt weird about it? And we feel there's something, is there something wrong with me? Because we've been told that it's wrong. We don't normally act, for example, if I'm a man and I go out, you know, and I'm, if I'm a straight man and I'm always attracted to women, if I find myself suddenly attracted to a man, I may think that there's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just that my predominant attraction is towards women, but it doesn't mean that I'm not, I cannot be attracted to men, right? So that's attraction. Gender identity as well. Uh, when we talk about a gen gender identity, what are we talking about? We're talking about a series of mannerisms, a se uh, an appearance, in which we identify as man or woman. And we think the world is that, man or woman. The world is never black and white. As I've taught you in class, 
the world is never black and white. The world is always many shades of grey. More than 50 even, right? <laughs> many shades of grey. And there are so many people in the world who are predominantly attracted to the opposite sex and have an attraction to people of the same sex. There are many people in the world who are attracted to both men and women, as men and women. There are many people in the world who are comfortable dressing up as men, but once in a while dress up as women, and vice versa. And there are many people in the world who don't identify as men or women. There are also people who were born male but identify as women, people who were born female who identify as men. So, for example, a gender so, people? So, to a gender people, yes, um, do not identify as men or women. They are also known as gender queer. So, to answer your question, can gender identity and sexual orientation change? I would rephrase that question, if I may, and say that is gender identity and sexual orientation ever fixed? I have friends who were married to... I have a friend who was married to a man uh, for 15, 16 years, had two sons with him, and came out as a lesbian. I know a scholar, an academic, who was married to a wonderful woman uh, for many years, and after she passed away, he came out as a transgender woman. Uh, transgender woman. I mean, the Caitlyn Jenner uh, mm. story would be a very obvious example of how gender identities and sexual orientations ne are never fixed. Right? And of course, there's this presupposition that if you are a transgender woman, you must be attracted to men. No, I have friends who were born male, who are trans, who be, who live as women, who are attracted to other women. So. What are we talking about? We're talking about diversity. 